Washington football fans, or <laughs> does the Washington football team have any fans left after yesterday? Now, I can understand if you have a defensive breakdown in the secondary for like a game or two. Like, you know, it's one of those things where it just, it's going to happen every once in a while. But in the case of the Washington football team, our secondary has had breakdowns, have had blown coverages in every single game. That is a problem, and that is a result, in my opinion, it's a result of poor coaching. Because I think these players are good, solid players. I mean, if you look at how some of these guys played, in, you know, with past teams, and even just some of the rookies, players who were rookies last year, played extremely well, not playing very good this year. Something is happening within the coaching that's, it's just, it's breaking everything down. Now, yes, I blame it on the players as well. The players aren't 100% innocent from all this. The players have to be smart enough to know where they need to be. They need to be dependable enough to carry out their assignment, and they have not been doing that as, e as well as, well, before I get even more tongue-tied, just <clears throat> the fact that the defense obviously is not carrying out their assignments like they should. And honestly, that goes back to coaching. I hate to say it, but it does. If you have good coaching, and the players are responding to the coaching, then you're gonna see it on the field. Right now, we're not seeing it on the field. Now, when I say coaching, who am I blaming? Am I blaming Ron Rivera? Not necessarily, but he hasn't been perfect. Do I blame an old Jack Del Rio? Well, maybe, possibly. I think it, you know, the buck stops with him when it comes to all things defense. Do I start blaming it on the position coaches? Well, definitely you need to look at the position coaches and you need to try to figure out what is going wrong. Is there a disconnect between what those position coaches are trying to, you know, convey to the players, you know, to the players themselves who are just not getting it? And is there truly a mental block with the players? Meaning, are they not getting it because they just don't have the intelligence enough? And I don't want to say that because I think that is kind of a rude statement. And I think that it sometimes it can be very unfair. And I'm not trying to call anybody stupid because Lord knows I couldn't play football in, in the NFL. I couldn't even do it probably 10 years ago when I was in the best shape of my life. But there is some sort of a, a disconnect. And Washington football team is going to need to find where exactly that disconnect is. And they better do it in a hurry because they have Kansas City coming up this coming Sunday, this, this next weekend. And I do not expect the football team to beat Kansas City. I mean, if they do, then I'm gonna be even more confused of how can you go out and beat a team like Kansas City, but then you, you can't seem to win a winnable game against the New Orleans Saints, who had a lot of injuries, I might add, a lot of key players out. I mean, the Saints were right for the picking. In Washington, you look at all the stats and everything, on paper, they did everything right, except for the fact that they lost a football game. So, I mean, you know, th th there's there's just, I'm just flabbergasted by how the defense has been. I mean, I just, I don't understand it. I will say, it looked like we started seeing a little bit better play from that front four. They were getting pressure to Jameis Winston yesterday. They were pressuring him, and Winston turned the ball over. So, you know, that tells you, you get pressure on the quarterbacks, good things can happen for you as far as the defense goes. They didn't get as much pressure. I was hoping that they would, but they were getting pressure to them. They were getting some sacks. 
<clears throat> you know, Deron Payne had had a great day yesterday. Chase Young was in there. So, I mean, that is something we have to continue to possibly see in the, the next few weeks. We need to see a resurgence of that defensive front four. The linebackers, I mean, Cole Holcomb, he's always on the field. I have not heard a word about our first rounder, Jamin Davis. I'm beginning to wonder if he has been a big disappointment so far. Again, very hard for me to say that just five games into his career. But you kind of expect a first rounder to be in there playing. I mean, Benjamin St. Juice is in there playing, um, and he's not a first rounder. But I just, you know, have not been too happy with that. I, I kind of worried a little bit going back to preseason when we shouldn't worry about things, but yet it seems like those things that we shouldn't worry about in preseason winds up being a problem in the regular season. And case in point, we didn't hear a lot from Jamie Davis in the preseason. We haven't heard a lot from him in the regular season. And as a matter of fact, I think David Mayo played the majority of the game yesterday. So what does that tell you? It tells you that Jamie Davis is not ready to play NFL football. I mean, it's just, I feel like it's a wasted pick. So, anything good yesterday? Well, I will say this. You look on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, uh, D'Angelo Carter, I, you know, he played lights out yesterday. You know, not only is he a strong returner, but... He showed you he can play wide receiver as well, and he played really well yesterday. My hat's off to Carter yesterday. He really bailed Taylor Heineke out a lot, especially considering the fact of the injuries we had to receivers yesterday. Uh, Taylor Heineke, not that great of a day, turned the ball over, forced some passes he shouldn't have passed or shouldn't have thrown you know, not a great day from Taylor Heineke, but he's a baller. I mean, he's going to make mistakes. Honestly, Fitzpatrick, if Fitzpatrick had the same day, we'd say, well, you know, it's Fitzpatrick. That That's how he plays. Well, it's, that's how Taylor Heineke plays as well, folks. You know, Taylor Heineke, I think he can start. He can continue to start. When Fitzpatrick is healthy, I think you still keep Heineke in there unless he just continues to just take a nose off. But Heineke made some good plays for us. You know, the offense was able to move the football up and down the field. We were able to run against the Saints. And that that's probably another positive from yesterday. The Saints had the number one run defense in the league. And Antonio Gibson was able to run against that that defense it just you know the problem is when you start getting behind you can't always stick to your running game as much as you would like but my hat's off to to Gibson he was able to run uh, McKissick didn't have as big of a game yesterday as we had hoped uh, I was happy to see Jarrett Patterson in there uh, making some plays uh, I think he's going to be a tremendous running back for us you know, another undrafted guy who had a long shot a chance, made it. And I think when he gets the ball, then he, he tries to make every, you know, just just everything of it. And uh, so I, I think we're, we're still going to be solid there at running back. Um, you know, Ricky Seals-Jones, a decent day yesterday. Uh, didn't really see Samus Reyes. He, I saw him on the side lines there, but I didn't really see him in. So I don't know. He may have been in for a play or two, but um, we saw more John Bates out in the field. It sounds like John Bates uh, did his job, had a solid day yesterday. Uh, of course, he didn't catch any passes, but, you know, uh, a tight end's duty is not just going out and catching passes. Against linebackers, it's you know it's blocking, and John Bates was seemed like he was doing a pretty good job of that. So 
I mean, there there were some positives, you know, Terry McLaurin being Terry McLaurin. Um, and Taylor Heineke tried to get the ball to Taylor. Uh, Taylor Heineke tried to get the ball to Terry as much as he possibly could. So, I mean, there were some good things yesterday, mostly on offense. But it comes down to this. Your defense cannot allow big home run plays like they did yesterday. The Saints won because of improbable blown coverages that seem to be happening week in and week out. And as a coach of the staff, if you can't fix that, then you're not the coaching staff for us, plain and simple. And I don't think that's across the board, but the buck does stop at Ron Rivera. Uh, having said that, I'm a Ron Rivera apologist. Um, I think he is the right guy for to, you know to lead this team to do a culture change. There's been a lot on him. So I'm willing to continue to give Ron Rivera the benefit of the doubt. But Ron, Ron Rivera is going to have to show us that there's going to have to be changes or there's going to be changes made and that we can see it on the field. If we can't see it on the field, then, you know, you're not the coach for us. So that's, that's, just, that's just the plain simple of it. Anyway, folks, very frustrating day. Very winnable game that we beat ourselves in. Uh, my hat's off to the Saints. My hat's off to Jameis Winston. Um, you know, he he played pretty well yesterday. Well, he he was all you know he was up and down, but he made the plays when he had to, and that that's all you can ask for your quarterback. So coming up, we got Kansas City. We got some tough games ahead, uh, games that honestly I will I would expect to lose at least two of those games out of the next you know four weeks. Uh, was hoping we could get a game against the Saints to be up three and two to go into this next you know tough stretch, but we're two and three. So my hope is is that. You know, when we get to the uh, division games toward the end of the season, that the team is not like two and six or anything like that. If they are, they're sunk. I mean, you know, because you're looking at five division games, and that would not be enough to, honestly, uh, to me, that would not be enough to get us into the playoffs. Anyway. Enough of that. <laughs> There's no talk of playoffs now. Happy Monday morning, guys. Hopefully, things will get better throughout this week. I will see you in the next video. Hell to the Washington football team, even though they frustrate me.